Historically, the value we've gotten from our physical devices has been derived from tactile interaction. I flip a light switch. I turn a key in a door lock. I twist the dial on my thermostat. That's all changing, thanks to the Internet of Things. For example, I want to be able to drive my car up to my house and have my garage door open, my security system disarm, my door unlock, and my lights and music to come on, all automatically. I want to enjoy all of this benefit with no physical interaction whatsoever. In effect, these things, these devices, these products are becoming services, anticipatory, immersive, experiential. That sets up what we refer to as the thing maker's dilemma. The challenge is that the service paradigm of most product companies, most thing makers, breaks down in the scenario I just described. For example, you buy my crockpot. My service paradigm is as follows. No offense, but I hope I never hear from you again. If I do, I'm going to ask you two questions. Are you in warranty? And is your support request within the scope of what I have decided I will support? If so, I'll fix your issue and get you off the phone just as quickly and cheaply as I can. And no offense, I hope I never hear from you again. Now, this clashes with an environment populated by groups of cloud-connected, interconnected, intelligent, context-aware learning devices operating in a dynamic ecosystem with constant upgrades and new additions. That environment requires a continuous service management model. And absent that, perfectly good devices get returned as no fault found returns. That's the thing maker's dilemma. Who loses? Certainly the consumer, device makers or thing makers as we refer to them here, distributors, platform providers who are working to help make multiple diverse devices work together smoothly, and data aggregators who are able to convert the data these ecosystems generate into useful and valuable information and insights. That's a lot of value to leave stranded.